Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Joe Figueroa with another video in our series Anatomy of a Dance, where I break down social dancing count for count, pointing out all the dancers do. This week's video is going to be about musicality, in particular the musicality of Terry, and even more in particular, musicality during partner work. But first I'm going to ask you to share, like, and subscribe. If you want to donate to the work I do, there's a link in the description. No worries, I'll remind you later. But for now, let's get started. A few weeks ago, I was talking with a subscriber at one of my socials about my content and he had some suggestions. I asked him to send me an email so I could keep track of it. The next day, I got a PDF file with some really great comments and questions, complete with links to certain dances to go with each topic. The topic of Terry's musicality while in partner work in this dance with Annabelle stood out to me right away, mainly because others have asked me to break down this same dance. So thanks to Robert, Hiro and Kumiko, and Cameron for the requests. Now this dance is a marathon. Two hardcore salsettos dancing to Guaripompe by Poncho Sanchez live. That's a nearly nine minute long song. And Poncho is a conguero, so that means it's going to be upbeat and powerful. I'm a DJ as well, and I can tell you that it is uncommon for a DJ to play a live version of a song, being that they are usually longer than the album version. Guaripompe's album version is long no matter what, so playing the live version is really unusual. But I checked into it and found out how it ended up being played that night. Since we're talking about musicality and partner work, I'm going to choose three particular parts in this dance. I will also post a link to that unedited dance so you can hear and see what I'm talking about. First, at this point around a minute 20 seconds in, there was a flute solo. Now what to make note of about this and really most of the musicality is that it's clear that Terry knows this song. With how much he social dances, it stands to reason that he would. Still, I researched it and it turns out that there is much more to this dance. Terry anticipates a hard accent in the music before the solo. He brings Anna toward him, places his hand to her right shoulder firmly, and bows forward to meet the accent in the music. Anna responds to his touch and reacts as Terry had hoped. He then creates a fake for Annabelle, which I have said in previous videos is just the basic step. Terry breaks away and begins to move with the flute solo in real time. His movements are pretty precise. I checked into it and here's what happened. Earlier on that Sunday afternoon, Terry had a workshop on musicality during partner work. During this workshop, he chose this song, Guadipumpe, and led a piece of choreography for leads and follows that went with the music. So that goes to show that the best thing you can do to get better in musicality is listen to more music. Terry studied this song over and over because he intended to use it for a workshop. His memory, feel, and understanding of every part of this song is evident. Here at the two minute mark, Still in the flute solo, he takes Annabelle into a rotation movement. You can see here that Anna picked up the inflection changes in the flute rhythm and began to step in time with it, literally going into slight drops in her steps as the flute tone drops, and then rising up when the tone rises. At this moment, she is the flute, along with Terry. But then Terry, knowing that she is the flute, and that a drum accent is about to come, he changes his rhythm with a hop in mid-motion to become the drum hit. This is the first example of both dancers becoming the instruments, becoming the music. Now we have the timbala solo, but first a little more on the story of the dance. Annabelle tells me that she had been having the most perfect night of flow, her words. She had danced several songs before this one and was feeling wonderfully exhausted. Have you ever had that? That feeling where every muscle in the body has been hit by rhythm and movement? It's what I think people must mean when they refer to a good hurt. Anyway. There was a slight break in the music as the DJ began to make an announcement. Anna figured she would be able to rest during the next song. The DJ gets on the mic and says that everyone that took Terry's workshop that afternoon needs to get on the dance floor and show what they learned. He then puts on Guadipumpe. Terry makes a beeline for Annabelle, asks for her hand, and she tells him that she didn't take the workshop, and he should probably ask someone that did. Terry says, don't worry about that, just follow. So when the timbala solo starts, Terry begins to step in almost a stomping motion on the floor, in time with the music. Even his head nods are in time with the instruments. After a brief display of solo musicality, he moves toward Anna, who during this time was also expressing herself through the timbala's hits. Terry once again leads a fake, implying a crossbody lead but stopping her before she can cross, then leading an inside turn to check from the shoulder. I'd like to take a moment to point out that even with all this rapid movement happening, Terry still displays good leading technique, 
I always tell my student leads that when leading a shoulder or hip turn, you shouldn't bring the hand to the shoulder or hip. Don't bring your hand to the body. You bring the body to your hand. Terry extends his hand across, brings Anna forward, passing him, and it is there that he makes connection and begins her inside turn. I know that might seem like no big deal, but you'd be surprised how often I see this done on the dance floor poorly. Moving on. The shoulder turn to check was for a purpose. Terry wanted to shuffle back in time with the timbales hits and bring her along for the ride. Anna, being a hair trigger response, follows along perfectly. If I was noticed through this check and exchange afterwards, Anna doesn't glance over her shoulder to see what Terry is trying to do. She keeps her gaze forward and opens the sensitivity in her body to feel where he is rather than see. This is great following technique. Look at the way Terry uses his hands at her shoulders even pressure on both sides, so she doesn't feel as if one side is being pulled more than the other. Look at his firm but delicate application of the hands, in time with the hits, but also giving instruction and direction, while giving Anna opportunity to express. She reacts in her upper body, then he changes the amount of pressure, giving more to one side than the other, creating angles for Anna, the entire time Anna steps with it, switching her connection with the hits to her steps. Look at her smile. She can't believe how connected they both are. Look, even this guy watching can't believe what he's seeing. Terry leads her into an inside turn and turns left himself. They both go into shoulder shakes to match the flutter of the hits in the timbales, akin to the guaguancó of Cuban rumba. I don't know if he has studied or intended this, but right after the shoulder shakes, there is a cymbal hit, and Terry swings his arm in a circle, swinging toward Annabelle so the end of his swing matches the cymbal. This looks very much to me like a component in guaguancó called bacunao, which means to vaccinate. En este caso yo soy la gallina, él es el gallo, el varón, el que debe ejercer la fuerza, ¿no? Entonces él viene a atacarme y yo huigo. Al huir él trata de hacerse de mí, vacunándome, que es el movimiento que lo hace, el movimiento, ahí entonces yo hago esto, para taparme, para que él no me vacune. Yo no puedo dejar que él se acerque a mí. I'll post the link below, but it goes on. Now they are well into the middle of this song, and even though exhaustion is closing in, they are both in a zone where all that exists is the beat. Terry displays more connection with the song as the timbala solo continues, moving perfectly with every single hit. Then look at this flutter that's about to happen. Look at how Terry moves toward Anna. Look at his hands. Look at his fingers. He is spirit fingering along with the hits of the timbales. Once he has his hands to Annabelle, she matches his and the music's rhythm exactly, popping her chest and hips in time. After the third flutter, Terry brings Annabelle close for a rotation, similar to the last one, this time making the emphasis the cymbals by dropping during each. Anna is completely engaged. Notice how she never takes her eyes off his face. Notice how he is concentrated on the music. We get a biting of the tongue as the energy builds and Anna is having a great time. Extremely well done. The third piece I want to discuss is not far behind this one, and still within the timbala solo. About 30 seconds later, right at the crescendo and closing of the solo, Terry knows that there is a buildup coming. He moves toward Annabelle for a crossbody lead. His steps and pats of the hands are in time with the buildup. He bites his bottom lip, points in the direction that he intends to send Annabelle, and off they go. What I love about this is the display of the sounds almost appear to affect his body. It almost looks as if the drum and cymbal hits are bursting out of his chest. And those hits are in no pattern. Terry had to have studied this song fastidiously. But I see this more like... It comes from the music. The music is telling him what it wants. He is compelled. He is immersed in the music. A vessel. Once the dance starts, he no longer has a choice in the matter. I'm sure you watching must appreciate the difficulty in perfectly matching those hits while leading movements. That's a crossbody lead, handshake hold inside turn over both of their heads, break right, and triple hand switch, free spin to 360 crossbody lead, all while the drum beat is popping out of his chest. I spoke with Terry about this dance and he tells me that this timbales piece was the section that he used for the workshop, so his meticulous understanding of it is easily explained by just watching this. There was a poet that I love named Sonia Sanchez. She has a book called Like the Singing Coming Off the Drums. In it, a poem called I Am Remembering Love, 
there is one line that I feel encapsulates what Terry does with musicality. We are looking at sound. Musicality is essentially describing or explaining what a dancer is hearing or feeling through the body so it is then visible, almost explaining the music to those of us watching. They were both exhausted after over six minutes of hardcore dancing, but it's not over yet. You can see that they are both spent. I like this little exchange here where they missed hand connections, and it seems like Terry isn't even sure what he wants to do next. They both laugh through it. Or this other triple hand switch, which almost resulted in an elbow to the nose. Annabelle smiles at how close that was. All in all, a one in a million moment of symmetry and connection between two great dancers. I want to end with this. This moment at the end of the dance. When talking to Annabelle, she mentioned this. As they go to hug each other, Anna says to Terry, I'm dead. As if to say she's exhausted. The video fades to black, but immediately after she asked Terry how he can keep going the way that he does. He answered back with one word. Pride. That is going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, here is a QR code that you can use to donate. Anything is appreciated. Otherwise, please share, comment, like, and subscribe. And if you don't remember my words, remember Terry's. Remember that more you will listen to music, to salsa music, more you will know salsa music, okay? And more you will be able to be musical. So at home, in your car, in your... Um, MP3. Yes, thank you very much. Just listen to salsa. Try to find the artist, find salsa. This is what we are doing, okay? It's not only dancing. I'll see you in the next one, and hopefully very soon, on the dance floor.